Oh, Welcome to my Reality After God, Show. God, you guys. <laughs> Holy shit. Reality After Show with uh, not Johnny Fairplay. I don't know why his icon's in the corner because he's never on any of these podcasts. Let's pretend do. it's me. It's me with your beard. <laughs> well, if Johnny gets enough Botox, he's going to freaking look like you, dude. I mean, he's, he's <laughs> I know. Well, that's the best compliment you could give me. Oh, Me and my clear skin. <laughs> let, let me just say this. I was texting... I was messaging with you guys during the show and some old friends just happened to be texting me that, that are, they're like, dude, I love this season. And I was like, dude, I love this season too. I have fucking hated the last three seasons of survivor. No offense to Erica, Marianne and, and uh, gobbler. Right. But I was like, well, offense, offense to Gabler, offense to Gabler. Oh, dude, I mean, the, the shit, the, the past three seasons. So it's one thing, you guys and girls, to watch Survivor. It's another thing to watch Survivor and then give your opinion on it on a podcast, especially when right. you don't like the fucking season, right? So the last three seasons have been like, oh, God, this fucking sucks. I really dig well, this season of Survivor, and I'm happy with the outcome. What about you guys? I, first, I, I liked first of all. I liked last season. I didn't like the winner, but I did. I, overall, I think not as much as this season, but overall, I liked last season. I think we got some good players from it. This season was awesome. We got some good long players. There's a lot of people that are like potentially. I mean, Bruce is already coming back, but that was one reason. But looking at the jury outside of one or two, which I, I don't really want to trash on this one. This is celebratory. Brandon. Outside of one or two, <laughs> I think that there's there's some people that could potentially. I think there's a lot of options for different reasons that could fill different like casting roles that could come back and continue the story. Yeah, well, let me just say this. So, like, based on what you j just said, Wayne, uh, if I'm looking at this season, like, uh, I'm like, shit, I forgot about even Matthew, who was one of my favorite, the, the gay Matt Bischoff, right? Yeah. Uh, Jam Jam, such a huge character. Carson, I loved Carson. I think he would have won if he would have made it to the end of the game. Carolyn. Carolyn is one of my favorite Carolyn. survivors of all time. Australian survivor, yeah. American survivor, anything. You because got Because she's yeah. so freaking authentic, dude. Like, so you have these yeah. real people and that's what they're casting is like the reason I fell in love with survivor from day one is like, you're taking real people from everyday walks of life, putting them in this crazy game for a million dollars. Carolyn is one of those kind of people. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it doesn't even end there. It's like you have of uh, like the showman. It's like you oh, have dude. Franny. Who's like, I, I think Franny's a lot. I think Franny might be, one of the best jurors we have seen on in an oh, edit yeah. of Survivor in a very long time. Like, yes. She came I've in been... with an open mind, giving questions that gave every single person a chance to really highlight themselves. And you could really tell like she was trying to help drive conversation. Carson also did a great job in the jury, even though we all know he pulled the Jesse, went into the jury house and went and really went to bat for his number one in Jam Jam. Yeah. Like as much as he has love for Carolyn, you you knew like it was always him and Jam Jam. It was always those two. He's gonna hype up Jam Jam no matter what. All right. All those jurors coming in knew that Jam Jam and Carson were together, and Carson was not just like dragging Jam Jam along. Like like everybody knew that coming into this. Um. But yeah, I I I think that. Uh, I think there was a great, great season. A it, great finale yeah. too. A great finale. I was, I was out on my patio tonight. Mm -hmm. So my, my oldest son had a DJ gig and I was like, shit, he's got my laptop, my microphone cables, all my shit. So I was like, ah, oh, I might be a little late. So like, uh, it was myself and my youngest son watching this, this finale. And we were both like absolutely loving it. And we started talking about that, final ball dropping track mm -hmm. challenge before yeah, it happened. I love that like, yeah, we're like, oh God, like I hope we see that challenge. And then when that happened, we were like so freaking pumped. Uh and I knew immediately that Carolyn was gonna have a shitty time because she's so scatterbrained. Like that would be such a focus. Like if you have any 
scatterbrainedness whatsoever, that's not the challenge for you. Um, and I even said, I think Heidi could pull this off because she's mm-hmm. so kind of calculated in what she does. Um, I loved all the challenges, er- everything that went down in tonight's finale. I absolutely loved. I'm totally cool with the result. I, I-, I am a little bit bummed that uh, Carolyn did not get a single vote. Uh, uh yeah. 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 Like, why is that? So I was talking with Wayne about it um, while we were waiting for you, and my my take on it is based off we were what we were shown because we really didn't get a, a t- we got vulnerable Carolyn at Final Tribal, we didn't really see a lot of her like I guess like with the fire that a jury is looking for. I feel like right. she was very in the moment, but not in the in the moment of like I'm fighting to win this money like in her head i think she was doing everything she could to like keep her composure like don't let the moment get too big for her i think the moment may have been just a little too big for her um and that's not me like knocking carolyn at all because i was rooting for carolyn i wanted to see carolyn be the winner of this season so bad me too um but i i think jam jam had a very good final tribal and especially because in every moment that we were shown, because obviously there's hours of this, we only see right. 20 minutes of it. Every and, single time Jam Jam or Carolyn so would much. talk, yeah, every single time uh, Carolyn or Jam Jam would try to make a case, Heidi would interrupt them. But it was always Jam Jam that came back at at Heidi and like shut Heidi down. And I think the jury liked that. They liked yeah. that. Jam Jam wasn't standing down to anything. Anyone tried to backtalk him, he would come right back at them and be like, hey, how about you let me finish? I wasn't done talking. Um, yep. You'll have your chance. Like, Sit down, get your vote. I like I I almost had this fi- this whole finale like down to a T. I said Lauren was fifth. Heidi will win Final Four, put herself in fire against Carson, takes Carson out, or like sends Carolyn to do it against... Uh, Carson, which should have happened. Um, you then get to the vote. I still thought Heidi would have been a zero vote finalist or one vote, but I thought it was gonna be like a closer, like a four three one or a five two one with like a jam jam win ultimately. Yeah, so we we know so who who do you think voted for Danny. Heidi? Danny voted for Heidi. Danny. Da- come on. Yeah, I, I watched the come first on. Da- minutes, Dan- yeah. Danny is definitely the person in that group that goes. Well, she she took him out in fire. Doesn't matter oh. what else she did in twenty six days. She took out the king. Yeah, he's a firefighter. Yeah, he's a firefighter. He's like, I like oh, the can fire. We, can we also talk about? I, I know because this isn't ultimately his poncho. important. Uh, no, I'm talking about the fire making. <laughs> his yellow <laughs> poncho. Oh, okay. That, I'm, I wasn't even going to bring any notice to it. It was bad. Um, oh, God. Uh, there, How do you th- choose that? Is, How do you choose that from wardrobe? Right. So this is the Mark third. Cody. This is the third straight season now, where they have made a very pointed case to highlight that this is the all-time record in fire making in terms of time. Mike Turner did it, then Gabler did it, and now Heidi did it. Are they putting kerosene on on this like fucking pieces of wood that they're giving that like? Remember when we got to a point in a season where he had to give matches because the people were so bad? This is another right. reason why fire making shouldn't determine a winner and it should not be a part of this game. I would rather, if I'm Carson, if I'm Jesse, even though no matter what they say, I don't care what they say in the exits. Never. I would rather go out in a boat. If I'm the best player in the game and I just could not save myself, I'd rather be fighting to save myself than being like, well, I'll, it's okay. I'll just try to make fire. Like, I have confidence issues, so I'm not going to make it because that's, like, the story that we had for both Jesse and Carson this uh, these past two seasons. It's like, yeah. give it a break. I'm glad Heidi didn't win because it at least can now tell maybe season 46 people. Fire, if you're on the jury, putting winning immunity and then throwing yourself in fire making should not will not be the end all be all like you think it is. Yeah. I mean, this all started with Ben Drebergen, like one survivor. Well, it, right? well that part, 
well, this all started forced fire making started with healers, um, heroes, hustlers, mm -hmm. but the winning immunity and throwing yourself into the um, fire making was edge of extinction. So when once Chris Underwood won, edge, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's another crazy thing. Uh, and it's also the last time that someone, the person who won the final individual immunity won the season. Well, I know Johnny's The most Fair important plays, immunity. John, Johnny's got to be so annoyed because we heard the word resume so much on bucket tonight's list. episode. Right? Yeah, bucket list, resume. Uh, yeah, when I'm watching Heidi, like, I, I, uh, I was just like, what did, like, what did Heidi do? And then even when Lauren was, like, saying – this big speech about how badass she was and all this stuff. Like I like Lauren. Like I think she's cool and all, but like the show is so dominated by jam, jam, Carolyn and Carson oh. that I really, it overshadowed what anyone else in the game did. It, it very much did. Um, yeah. And I think part of it was by design. It's very obvious now why you, Put the focus on those three. I think those are the three people that production immediately went like, if we are gonna have like a returning season in the future, and like we're trying to pull heavily from the new era, these are our top three people. Jan Jan Carlin, yes. Carl said one hundred percent. We're calling you. We'll call we'll, Franny. They'll we'll probably call try. Danny. Um, I hope they don't call Danny. No I hope they Danny. don't either because he's just. It, it's not fun. Cringe. It's just cringe. With, with him. Lauren's story. I mean, we got like, like some of it at, for her, her boot episode or whatever, but I, everyone was talking about how she's like some giant threat. I'm like, where, where, where did this well, come from? I, <laughs> well, I guess, I guess, I guess let, let's, let's get into so it. Let's, I, yeah, I was going to say, let, let's get into it. Let's talk because we can okay. talk about this uh, finale in broad strokes here. We don't have to get into the, the details like, of the nitty beginning to end. Yes, yes, so, yes. yes. They move to to the camp. It means Maybe absolutely each. nothing. Um, yeah, I yeah. love that this season there was no um, there was no everyone do this word search for a chance at an advantage for the final five immunity. There was none of that, but there was an idol. They did replant an idol. No one finds it. It's of no consequence, even though it was literally staring at the face of every single one of them at one point in that twenty four hour period. Yeah. Um, so. This is the story of Lauren going out at five. And I think this is Survivor doing this big course correction with how they edited Ricard in season 41. Because going into the finale in season 41, everyone thought Ricard like, had a chance of going home. But of the field, everyone felt very confident that Ricard was going to win because he had the most character development of the five. Right. They, you had the most investment in him, especially because they wouldn't let anyone be looked at as a villain, even though Ricard wanted to be seen as a villain. Um, so you have this moment, and then Ricard goes immediately at five. Like, it's this big deal. They make, and I think part of them fell in the trap of, oh, but the story of him going out at five was such a, like, a heroic thing that, like, you can swell with the music. And they're like, we can do that now. And it's also because of the reaction they get from Erica winning. And I was like, but you didn't tell Erica's story. Right. Like, why right. didn't you tell us this? So now I think they're course correcting where it's like, oh, like Lauren's very likable. Lauren has right. this very good case of winning the game, but that's not the story we want to tell. We want the viewers to see the story of Tika winning. And in right. order to show the story of Tika winning, we need to see Tika dominating and get very little from the other. So you can get the goofy moments from Jamie. You can get the delusional moments from Danny. And it's like, but you're not going to show the reasons why these people had a very serious case of winning. Um, and I think that's what Lauren ultimately falls trap of because some people were telling me last week, like, well, Lauren's obviously just not a good storyteller, but when you listen to Lauren speak, I don't know about you guys, but especially during this episode, I was captivated. I was too. If they would have showed Lauren, if they would have showed confessionals of Lauren like we saw tonight throughout the season like or like in a 90 minute right. episode we see more I would be like more invested in Lauren but I'm like as as I'm watching I'm like okay Carolyn Jam Jam Carson like I had no interest in Heidi or Lauren whatsoever right. because not because I don't like them 
It's because the freaking editors did not show us nope. jack shit of them. And I'm looking hey, over hey. at my youngest son, and we're like laughing. We're like, uh, who's what, Lauren? What, what, Blah, blah, blah. Well, like, I, like, I, ha, ha, ha. Who's yeah? Who like, is like, this person? like, I do a podcast every fucking week, and I don't even know who this person is. How is the right, average right. viewer that did just like, you know, I'm looking at my phone on TikTok and I'm I'm watching Survivor at the same time? You're not going to know anything about that player, right? It's because I, if you go on social media at her like boot uh, tonight, you yeah. would get two things here. You would get. I wish we could have gotten more of Lauren because this was fantastic. Uh, and yep. the second one is like, who, like, why didn't you edit it? The big point of question is as much as we love Tika and we love that they were the, the spotlight, there is a serious problem in this modern era with how Survivor decides to edit its cast. Uh, and yep. I think if you are putting people on that cast and they are people that you don't think will tell, a compelling story. I don't care how much of a super fan they are. Don't cast mm-hmm. them. If you're putting these people on an island, you need to give their, they have to be part of the story. They're not irrelevant. It, right. These people are like gone from their families for a month. Right. Like they are part, like they're part of the story. Like the fact that there's always people every time we do this where it's like, who? Who is that? I mean, you know, we watch it pretty closely, and there, and initially, there's so many people. Alex, you you rarely are like who. I think you <laughs> you have a oh well, yeah, both both. I I'm I'm stupid during seasons. I'm like paying very close attention to every like little thing that's happening. But yeah, but, everyone's but not the way me. they edit. Uh, but I agree with you. The way that they edit it, it's like there's always people that were like who, and then. We get this with Lauren. It's like, oh my God, I would have loved to watch more of her this season. Even if she still goes out at five, like mm-hmm. I would have loved more of her story. But like, I, a but, little is bit it, more... but is there fear that by showcasing her more and showing, because the reasons why that people were scared was one, all of her like original tribe was on the jury, but two, they're like, mm-hmm. even if they weren't on your, in your alliance, Lauren did a very good job in her social game of, really being compelling really like right drawing drawing you in making you feel like family making you feel at right. home at ease like you, you and we know for a fact through 44 seasons of this show very rarely does survivor ever do a good job of properly showcasing a social game we hear people talk about social game we hear jam jam talk about you know everybody loves me this is great but like yeah. we don't get to see 99% of that. We will we'll only see, see a strategy. Next, do you think we're going to see more in a 90 minute episode for season 45? God hoping. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, so I don't know how this works, but uh, Catherine Allen uh, says uh, Jam Jam uh, had final travel council. I thought Carolyn would get one vote. I did too. I, I, was I thought very... she was going to get Franny's. Yeah, I'm very surprised because as much as let's say Carolyn didn't give like the best final jury speech moments, I feel like she played a good enough game. Um, but was it too at least a vote? Yeah, because like uh, some well, the people that are at the point that her idol gets revealed, people see the idol. The people that are still there after the vote get to hear her story, but at that point, like how much of that is game like i feel she fell victim to people buying more into well she was just she was so attached to jam jam and carson whereas jam jam and carson weren't attached to her i feel like she does fall victim to that i do feel and i know we don't like making this a big deal on on the podcast but i do feel she gets discredited by some of the some of the guys on the jury of being the, the older woman mom of the alliance instead and yeah. jam jam sort of gets to be more carefree and his lovable self and you get to laugh and then you're like you know what i can give jam jam the credit mm-hmm. yeah which but also that's like that's the game that, uh, that that's the game mm-hmm. that's how people are gonna vote and i and like i don't want to discredit jam jam for winning the game because i think he played a very good game and i respect someone who can use 
his words as his weapon. <laughs> like that being a winner quote is something that people should remember. I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. Like as a person that, Oh, I would love to play a survivor, right? That's who, who knows, whatever. Like playing a game like jam jam is a game that I, I can identify with personally. Like I, I you know, like I, work pretty well with my words. I'm like, Oh yeah. So you can win by like building good core relationships with the right people at the right times and having a little bit of luck fall your way and go, I'm pretty, you know, like, or whatever. I mean, so. He's hilarious. Like, this is like I said, it's the disarming. first time in a long time that I'm happy with the winner. Like uh, as much yeah. as I would have, like I said, I was like, okay, going into this final episode, if Carson, Carolyn, or Jam Jam wins this game, I am very happy with that outcome. If anyone well, else wins the game, the, I am not. The, the editors made you feel that way. They did. They did make uh -huh. me feel that way. And uh, yeah. but last time I was like, uh, like I started, I was like, "There's no way Gabler's winning the game. No, no way." And he wins. Yeah, they rooked There's us. no way Eric is so, winning this game. No yes, way. <laughs> I'm quitting the podcast. There's no Eric way wins. Marianne's winning this game. Alex, you're talking crazy. <laughs> so I'm very, very, very happy that someone that I was like excited to win, like Jam Jam, is so fun and so great. I'm very happy. Yeah, and him. and I think and I think either of them would have been a good. Um, like an advocate for the game, um, for for the show itself, like a mm -hmm. Carolyn win or a Jan Jam win, that's a great spotlight if you're Survivor. Like, well, I, I, I want to take that I, and run with it. Well, I want to tell you guys this. So, like when I played Survivor Caramo and fans versus favorites, ooh, whoopie do, half of my tribe or more was not fans, never watched the show. So I'm a huge fan. So like. I was, when I watched tonight's episode on that last challenge, when they're up on that like elevated platform, mm -hmm. looking over at this gorgeous view of Fiji and, and Carolyn's getting so emotional about it. Cause she's so ecstatic. Like I'm here. God. I've dreamed about this. Right. So that's touching me in such a, a, a deep way. And then when I think back of my season and how devastated I was when I got voted out of the game and I knew that there were so many people in the game from the fans tribe that didn't give a shit dude like like after the game like i heard about family visits where they were like yeah we could really care less to be there and i'm just like are you fucking kidding me dude like my wife would have been like Damn. the best experience of her life and you have these people that made it deep into the game of fans favorites that didn't give a fuck so i'm like screw you because this experience doesn't mean what it means to someone who is truly there for this beautiful experience. Even Lauren, who I think was like not even on my radar of someone I really cared about as a player tonight on her boot episode, when she's given this speech at a tribal council and I'm like, okay, it's, this is obvious. This is her, her going away speech. It was beautiful and eloquent. And it's like this game changed her. She's different now because of it. And as a viewer, you might be like, how in 25 days can this change your life or whatever? 10 years later, Survivor changed my life. Yeah. yeah. I had a cool, I had a fucking badass life before Survivor. Like, I don't need Survivor to make my life badass. But Survivor taught me so much about appreciation and what you can conquer as a human being. And, uh, it's such an amazing thing. So seeing Lauren's story finally on her boot episode, I'm glad that we got to see that. Mm -hmm. And I know that Jam Jam and all these players that are like on the jury even are like, they're fans, but they're not like nerd fans like we've seen on 41, 42, and 43. Like they're fans, but they're also they're they're just appreciative but they're not like mega starstruck where it's like over the top if you get what i'm saying i, mean, I think there's a good mix i, I think yeah as i was say i think carson and franny are pretty mega nerd fans by the way oh, yeah, 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 yeah. i mean i mean <laughs> uh, and that's okay it's yeah. okay to be that i don't need it, the entire the entire cast to be that 
Uh, no. So, and you have that mix. You have the mix of people who came here, and I could see people that came here and, like, I'm, I will be called again. I see people that, like, I came here for my one experience, and I am yep. content. I see people that are, I came here, I did some stuff. This might get me to, like, that Challenge USA next. Who knows? Uh, that's, like, Brandon, because Brandon. Brandon was absolutely purple this episode as a juror. Um, but, like, you have that mix, and that's important. Um, so, yeah. Let's, as a question uh, on that. Who, let's just go from final, f- final tribal of those players there. Who do you think has a legitimate chance to come back and play? Um, let's, the let's three. assume, let's assume, let's assume there's a slight uptick in returning players. Let's say mm-hmm. they start to like in two seasons, they, they have five new era seasons under their belt. So they start cycling through a few of those new era players who on this season, because I think we had a lot of good ones from last season, but I'm curious who's coming back. Bruce. Br- okay, well, Bruce I, 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 I like, well, like, like, that's why yeah. I said. Yeah. Uh, for, for people. Well, I, I do want to say for the people that did not get to this point in the game, one person that isn't Bruce that I think, could legitimately get a call back for a second opportunity is Matthew. Yeah, um, I, yep. yeah, the game Matthew but, Schaff, 100%. I loved him. The top four that I would say are is what I said at the beginning. I, it's the Tika three and Franny. I think yep. those are your the people that you really gave shine to a lot of time. Uh, yep. the, the, the internet loves those four people or at least have enough divisiveness that they would be an interesting person to be brought back yeah. uh, because Matt, Matt, the only thing, his whole entire story is just Franny. There's not enough for me to be like, yeah. I want to see Matt again, Brandon. Uh, unfor- and I don't mean this in a mean way, Brandon, but Brandon's edit. archetype is a dime a dozen. Uh, and, and came, then in that, yeah. came, came was disrespected and was not given a full edit. We needed that type of nerd on our television screens. I wanted to see him go into final tribal council in the voting booth and throw a 20 sided die to determine who he voted for. Like I wanted that. And I was deprived of that. And I, and from what I've heard, because Kane, Kane's done. (laughs) uh, And from what I've heard, because Kane's been at some of the live events, I've heard Kane's amazing. I'm sure. And I'm like, and I'm like, let us see more of that. But um, Jam Jam, yeah. Carolyn, and Carson, like even if like I like Franny, I could see her coming back. But Jam Jam Carson and uh like I if would they love... come back together, that's a problem though. Oh yeah, no, like so like out of some like so uh Hoboke and Mike, I'd love to see come back. Uh young strength or whatever his name is, his name? Jonathan. Jonathan, Jonathan I'd love, I'd love to see come back. Uh Jam Jam, Carolyn Carson, uh, Christian Hebecki, Jesse, I know, Jesse, yeah, Jesse Carla. Lopez. There's, oh, yeah, yeah, Carla. There's a lot of people actually that, um, I feel could be really cool. I like Johnny always says, fair, well, first of all, if you're wondering where Fair Play is, Fair Play does viewing parties pretty much every week, so it's really not the reality after show with Johnny Fair Play right after the show. Typically, it's Wayne Mehmet. Cincinnati stand-up comedian, good friend of ours, that will hold down the fort with Johnny on Fridays. Typically, it's Alex and I or Alex Dan and I on Wednesday night, Wednesday night after the show. So Johnny was with the Queen tonight uh, and Dan Monchel, among others, in North Carolina somewhere for the finale. Uh, if you want to see Johnny oh, yeah. Fairplay's take, Johnny Fairplay and Jesse Lopez are going to be doing a podcast on Friday. You can see their take. Um, I feel like Johnny says, look, there's enough great survivors in the survivor pool right now to just never do newbie seasons, just do returning player seasons like the challenge does. The challenge is highly successful and they just bring back returning players. So at this point, I would love to see a mix of like, Older players like Benjamin Coach Wade and myself, of course, uh, Johnny Fairplays and Jesse Lopez's. I think there's a great pool of players. 
And uh, as much as the new era, season 41, 42, and 43, which I say I've not liked, like Wayne said in the beginning of this podcast, I, it's not that I didn't like the season and some of the characters and stuff. I just like did not like the outcomes and the winners and some of the bullshit that CBS yeah. was trying to shove down our throats with political agendas and and uh, pop culture bullshit. I want to see motherfuckers play the game of Survivor, and I feel that this season gave us that. Real people yeah. playing the game, and that's why we have these emotional moments and emotional connections with people like Carolyn, Jam Jam, Carson, etc. I thought it was beautiful. And, and I think ultimately this jury did come across a lot more as I'm voting on who I believe played the best game, not necessarily who I loved the most. Yeah. Uh, because I, I, I think if, I, uh, if there was more, if there was a lot more emotion behind the vote, I think it's a lot more spread than what we got. Um, I, and maybe part of it's also some of them talking similar to like winners at war where it's like, if you have people from the same Alliance all at the end, you don't want to be splitting your votes across the board. So you're just like, you go in, you're like, it's either going to be one or the other. Let's see what happens. Jam Jam talks better. They go, it's Jam Jam, and we give it the Jam Jam. Um, but I do want to bring us back around, and I want to talk about, oh, yeah. um, but because it, it is a recap, after all, uh, let's yeah, talk we should about, recap. Let's talk talk about the challenges. Yeah. So we, we had the fifth. Uh, the final five immunity challenge, which is also for a reward, and uh, because you know, at ultimate. the sanctuary, oh, yeah, where, where good things happen, where nothing happens, where, where nothing no, happens. no, not not where nothing happens, where good things happen. Uh, Jeff is the, let's, first let's of go, all, let's get that, let's get that jazz music, let's get the jazz music going in oh. the background. Uh, uh, but Jeff is so oh. yeah, it, right. it, it was bad, but. So for Final Five, it's a race uh, to grab keys along a three-level obstacle. Uh, you then go down, get a last one off of using a pole, uh, collect all your keys, unlock a chest to get a rope, uh, like the monkey ball, uh, to mm -hmm. then pull down a ladder and then a survivor puzzle. Um, which, as soon as you say survivor puzzle, you know, well, Carson's winning this. He definitely has yeah, a 3D built printed 3D op uh, three-floor obstacle as well. Uh you know, he he made this is all in his backyard. He made it. <laughs> so I, I want to ask you guys this. So we've covered Australian Survivor before on our Patreon side, uh, realitypatron.com. If you want to be a patron, we do a weekly Q and A, and amongst other things. But um, it's the best way to support the podcast. But I will say, when I'm watching this challenge at Final Five, you guys, I was like, this challenge does not really seem that difficult looking. They're, they're, they're walking up to a certain level and grabbing this and going. I just feel like there should be more difficult challenges. I wanted later in the it game. to be reversed. I like, want to see a do the puzzle first where you do the puzzle first and then you go into the physical stuff. That would like, rule. I, I wanted to see something because, like, it would have been, it wouldn't be the same, but it would have been somewhat close to, like, the final fives, the final four challenges of like the steep staircase. Yeah. Where it's like you're just yeah. constantly having to put more on, go back down, put more on, keep going down. And like you're collecting the seats. Like you could have done something like that with this three level um, uh, yeah. obstacle that they had. Uh, they didn't do it. You know, it's the new era. They're cheap. They're lazy. They're like it's different, but it's not different. Um, like it is what it is. But would would you say it was very worth playing for when you know that the reward at the sanctuary where where good things happen, um, spaghetti cake. and meat sauce and chocolate cake and carrot cake? And my first thing is, wh why in the holy hell would you pair spaghetti and meat sauce with chocolate cake? Like, I'm sorry. Theory. Is this a sanctuary where good things happen or a sanctuary where the drizzling shits happen? I I have a theory. This this first part of this episode is titled 
oh shit, we forgot we have all this shit because it's like this whole challenge was just like, oh fuck, we didn't use the key ladder. Oh my God, there's not been one monkey ball this entire season. Get that in there. Like, like no circle, no circle bullshit puzzle. That's impossible to do. Like none of that. And they're like, they threw it all in. They're like, what's left in the commissary? Well, no one liked this, the carrot cake. Give that to those pigs. Well, they, half of them love it. <laughs> yeah. you know? So it's just like I mean, this whole thing. I mean, and then it comes out of the story because it was all about Lauren. And that was also like a, oh, shit, we forgot to talk about Lauren this whole season. So. Dude, anyway. Okay, so, so like Carson wins this. And yeah. I know results oriented. Everything's fine. Tika three moves forward. But this really brought me back to Pearl Island, where I immediately texted my friend as soon as Carson won. I'm like, he he needs to bring Lauren. He needs to bring his target yep. with him because what was what were you all talking about? You all were talking about oh, there's probably an idol replanted. Yeah, bring your target and do not let them have a chance to wander out and try to find an idol. Let um, your two allies. Yeah. Be together, especially if you think your two allies are gunning for each other. You know how you get them to not gun for each other? Keep them together. Stick them over there. Yeah. Yeah, right. It, and then you have the fallback story that when you come back, you're just like, hey, we like Lauren. I gave her like a nice thing before she leaves or whatever. It's like strategic. Like you can oh. sell it as strategic. You oh, I wouldn't even have done that. Jam -jam. I literally was, I literally would have said. Lauren's my target, so I'm bringing her with me for her reward. Have fun, everyone. Hell yeah. Like, I literally was that that yeah. would be the most awkward reward dinner. I'd be like, so, how's your last dinner? Is it is it satisfying? <laughs> Will I get your vote? <laughs> and, and then all those people are like, I don't like Alex. And then they vote you out. <laughs> well, they can't. I'm safe. After. After. No, but no, they can't vote me out because they made a very big point. Like, this oh, is the yeah. last time you get the vote because oh, after right. this, you either go into fire making, you win the challenge, yeah, the most important challenge that no one wins by anymore, or you yeah. get taken. Who's the last person that won because they put their stuff in fire? The, uh, Chris Underwood? Chris Underwood. Yeah. Na and Natalie potentially would have, according to Boston Rob's. Uh, voting confessional during final travel of winners at war you should have done the full thing uh wow. but they didn't uh don't do it people you know you you know how you can um heidi like you weren't going to win anyway so win your immunity winning the immunity if you are being labeled as like this is the most important immunity challenge that you can win which is in motion as we're here talking about the challenges um Win the challenge and move forward. Like it's like last season. Cassidy made the right choice. She won that final immunity. She earned her spot. I'm gonna right. let someone who's good at fire take out the best player in the game. That right. shouldn't have been the end all be all to the jury being like, Well, she should have went in to go fire to beat Jesse. Why did you send someone else? We're gonna give our votes to Gabler because Gabler had these secret alliances that they decide not to show us in the edit. Uh like right. she should have sent the pyro out oh, to yeah. take out Carson. Right. <laughs> like, uh, but okay. So we, we have this issue where he decides to take his number one jam jam, which is very yeah. similar to the car challenge in, in Pearl islands where burden takes fair play. Mm -hmm. Because yep. at that point, burn was like, I'm just sick and tired of the other people. I'm going to bring the person I actually enjoy. And it allows right. everyone back at camp to be like, okay, Let's take out Burton. If Burton's not safe, yep. we're taking him out. And I thought we were yep. starting to get to the seats of that, where there was a moment in time where I'm like, I could see Carolyn doing this, but I, I immediately like pulled back as soon as Jam Jam came back. I'm like, it's just them. It's just them. And then Lauren yep. even says it in her confessional, she's like, they're both saying their names to me. It's just they're they've been together the entire game. Mm -hmm. right. I'm not gonna get played by these people. No. And then my, my last thing here is in what world for two. So Carson's safe and has pretty much made it actively known to everyone that he's voting Lauren. And then in the next side, like the other side of his cheek, he goes, I don't know why Lauren's not talking to me. 
Mm-hmm. Like, why Why wouldn't you be talking to right. me? The right. person who's actively saying I'm putting your name down. <laughs> right. It, I think that's also part of the age in him. Yeah, I think he's, that's he's, yeah, he's young as shit. Like, <laughs> he's 20. I, 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 I'm very impressed with how he played the game. Oh, yeah. Typically, he played a typically very younger game. players are, are terrible, I think. Yeah, played a very strong game. Yeah, uh, he's, and he's I think awesome. he actually benefits from going out how he did here. Like, I think if he comes back, depending how far removed it is, I think his exit sort of downplays the game that he did have on this island. Yeah. Well, let me ask you guys this as Survivor fans. Um, and I, obviously, I'm a fan as well, but, uh, but also put, put, putting up like some of our. People that we love, like the Johnny Fairplays, um, the Benjamin Coachways, Lex Vandenbergs, Malcolms, Joey Amazings, anyone like uh, pre season thirty or something like that. Mm-hmm. Put them in a game with players like uh, Jonathan and Hoboken Mike and uh, Jesse Lopez and Carolyn. Do the new school players stand the chance against the old school players, or yeah. vice versa? Like, we, what, like, we how do you, th- how do you, how do, but how do you think it really plays out at right now? And if twenty, if next season was new school versus old school, it now that, I, I know we saw like like Ethan Zahn not doing a whole lot, right? Do you think the new players dominate? I mean, it wasn't just Ethan Zahn. We saw him winners at war. The new school players just decimated old school. Why uh, is that? Why is that? You guys are a lot younger than like me and Fair Play, right? And we have our like, oh, we love the old school shit. Why is that? I think because not because not all the old school players are watching and dissecting a show they were on fifteen years or whatever, not whatever, seven, yeah, eight right. years ago, six years, yeah. you know. And age is a thing. You know, like there's seven years difference in their age or whatever it is, seven to it's it's like um yeah. a veteran pitcher. At, like right. they're still great. Aaron Rodgers. But at some point, depending how far removed you are, you don't you don't you, you can't throw that hundred mile per hour fastball anymore. You're throwing this ninety-two cutter. You're throwing this sweeper to try to like fool people. Like you have to like change your craft and it sometimes the old school players come in like a Boston Rob. Every single time Boston Rob comes into a game, he has never actually changed how he plays his game. Mm -hmm. So you can see it from a mile away. And the modern day players that they are bringing in, I think don't, it's like fans first favorites, like the original one. It's like, you have people that are starstruck by the, by the all-star players that are on the other side of the board. Whereas this, I think this crew that they are bringing in now are are less likely to be like, oh my god! Like they'll be like, oh my god, it's Matt Bischoff, but they're not going to be like, no. oh my god, it's Matt Bischoff. Let me bend at the knee and learn from from her. It'll be like, oh, is he useful to my game? Yes or no? If no, okay, he right. can go. Right. Do you, Do you feel that uh, like old school players? Just to just turn down and not fuck up their legacy, like 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 Big Tom and Lex, like oh they come back, and then and then you got like Jesse Lopez and Carson being like, let's get these old motherfuckers out immediately. Well, I think that would be part of the intrigue, but you run the risk as Survivor the show of Mm -hmm. if you put yourself in a position where it's new era versus old school. We saw, as much as Winners at War is a uh, fun season, and I enjoyed Winners at War, there's a lot of people that turn sour when thinking about Winners at War because they look at that boot list and they go, it was just that this specific group of new school players taking out all these idols that we watched growing up that made Survivor what it was, uh, and they just all went. We didn't get to get their full stories. We didn't get to see Yule's full story, Ethan's full story, Kim's full right. story, so on and so forth. Um, so if you're going to do this, you need to be very careful of how you structure the season. Like, I, I think you would have to go straight up tribe of old school, tribe of new school, have a swap in the middle 
uh, where you then mix the talent. Yeah. Uh, right, but right. if you do a mix heat, like you did at Winners at War, I truly believe old school will get decimated if they do not come in with a pregame. Uh-huh. Right. So uh, we, we talked about the, the, the challenge where uh, Carson obviously wins based off of his puzzle yep. domination, which, you know, you kind of get like when I was watching that, he got the outside part done first and was real fragile. He still wins kind of obvious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's go to the next challenge, which is the, the uh, Simotion. Uh, yes. So, this is, I was so I, happy. I love this. Here's why I love this because it's not the final challenge is not based off of pain tolerance, which is like variable to people. That's not athletic. It's not puzzle. Carson, you could build this in your backyard and it does. I mean, you could practice it a bunch of times, but when you're there after playing this game for so long, like this is a very even challenge. Yeah. Carolyn was at a disadvantage because her brain was scattered, but even the most scattered person can like lock in and find a rhythm at something like this. Like I really, really like these types of challenges for like the last one where you basically get to decide who you sit next to. I do too. Can I, I have a take. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I am tired of having the same three final immunity challenges. And as well, even though I'm someone who loves um, seeing the modern game and how it evolves, I want a throwback. And as much as we talk about pain tolerance, I want to see Hall Brawl. N- yes, I want to see <laughs> Hall Brawl. A two name for challenge where everything's a Hall Brawl or a pole wrestle. Uh, no, I want. I want the, the class. Like the Tony West. You want the Tony or uh, Tom Westman versus Ian. Oh, I would love that. But I, I mean, go even more classic. Something so simple. Put yourself near a spot where there's waves, two awkward foot positions, hand on an idol. Let me see I how love, I, love, I, I do. I love that too. I, the, I like the, the will to yeah. live challenges kind of thing. They, they do that on Australian Survivor. I like that. I like that style a lot too. I yes. like something where it's like even, kind of regardless of athletic ability, regardless of puzzle ability, kind of re- like it's just like kind of go do it. Yeah. the The reason why I say that though is because I I can't you can't just keep getting away with just the same three challenges. Right. It's this, I agree. It's some motion. It's yep. the uh, pool and do the block of letters. Yeah, the pool, and, yep. and then it's the one that Kim Spradlin and Cassie won where it's the weave the teacups through the obstacle yep. and, yep. and, and stack oh, them yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On ever the, ever the, since, yeah. Uh, yeah, ever since, um, I believe, Triple H, these have been the three. Yep. And it has not deterred from it. So I know Jeff loves the fact that everyone copies the puzzles, but mm-hmm. I'm like, it gets to a point where people are solving the puzzles faster than they ever have before because they've seen yeah. them all before. They are doing these physical challenges better because they have seen them all and are able to practice the hell out of them. They're able to make fire at the fastest rate they ever have because everyone knows the if you're going on Survivor now, everyone knows the ins and outs of how to make the fire right. when you get to Fiji. Right. You need to change things up. I mean, yeah. shit, Johnny Fairplay's traveling the country with fire making kits and doing them at his watch parties. Right. Like, so, I mean, <laughs> but that brings up a good point. So, Heidi wins um, this challenge, and it does get the four balls at least, where I think like in yeah. 42, it didn't even get to the third ball before Romeo right. won. Um, right. And, you know, if no, there's was, three balls there's... or more, you need to go to your doctor and get yourself checked. Um, <laughs> Manscaped. Uh, Manscaped. Hey, always check for lumps. Uh huh. Men's health. Um, but so Heidi immediately, and this is what's wrong with the game. Heidi's celebrating winning Final Beauty. Jeff's hyping her up like you have guaranteed your spot at Final Travel Cup unless I decide to make fire. And Jeff's reaction is like first, like he takes a step back and he goes, "Well, that'd be a big move." I'm like Jeff. Yeah. You're not allowed to say that. Yep. You're yep. not allowed to say that. Shut the fuck up. Yep. Um, but and now and it was such Can a we... bad decision on Heidi's part to say that in theory. Like again, results are yeah. in, it doesn't matter. But you now have given Tika all the incentive in the world to like get into your head of like, 
oh you should just do fire it's fine um but i really want to hark down to the emotional moment here and that's so we see jam jam and carolyn they're both fine they're like if we get thrown the fire you know what i'll embrace it i think i'll win it um because everyone knows they're either going to be going against heidi or they're going to be going against carson uh so we see jam jam go to carson who's struggling He's not doing the techniques right. Like he's doing, I think, I think he said chocolate droppings instead of chocolate yeah. uh, shavings. Um, and we see Jam Jam like trying to teach him. And yep. we see Jam Jam and Confessional being like, I know I shouldn't be helping him. Like selfishly, I shouldn't. But personally, I don't care anymore. Like I don't want to see him get embarrassed. I I care for him as a person. So I'm going to help him. If that sends me out of the game, then... I, I can't regret it because it's what I wanted to do. Yes. That's what won him the game. I I think it cemented it. I think even if he didn't do that, Carson's going in there stumping for Jam Jam, but it doesn't hurt. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's the last moment. Um, I do. I do want to go back. I, is this like? Is Jeff making more revealing comments this season than he has in the yes. past? Yes. And, okay. It's because it's real bad. Like he. Or at least is, shown on camera, which is even yeah, more I mean, of a choice. He's influencing some of the like talking points of the show with his comments. It's like, I, hey, ask probing questions based on information you know because you're you know producer on the show, but don't reveal like to people what your move should be because that's kind of almost like when hires like, oh, I might make it myself. He's like. You know that'd be a big move. It's like, oh yeah, the big move that I need because I have no big moves or any moves really at all. For <laughs> which, this whole game, which ev- which everyone would know because, as I've stated in like the last few weeks, um, I've been saying every single time, I don't know what Heidi's winner story is because her story has been she keeps talking about making the big risks, but has always gone back, always right. pulled back, always went back into the majority, kept like. And she right. says that at Final Tribal, like, I had to make the tough calls of, like, staying under, like, not even under the radar, but, like, just out of the way right. so that I didn't become a focus. But by doing that, you lose the agency. And she constantly was losing agency. And every single time she had a tool that she earned by finding it before others, she mis- uh, she misused them. She misused yep. the... Uh, the obtain the vote thing she uh, she messed up her idol play like and she was saying that as like tools for why she should win the game she's like i did play an idol i did do this i did do that right. like but you didn't use it correctly you didn't right. who did you save you saved nobody what mm-hmm. what uh did you save matt with that take a vote no you didn't he went home like did you right. save danny no you voted for him like you, right. you did all these things that sabotaged your own game uh, so I feel like for her, it does make sense for her to be like, oh, I, what do I have to lose by going right. into fire? I'm, like, I'm, I, I'm not this is something that I, I have here, to yeah. do. Yeah. But I don't like the precedent because we hear it from Jam Jam himself of like, this is such a good move. Like, I need to have this flashy move where the jury gets to see it. Like, you don't, it's not just me talking about it. They get to see it. And I'm sort of happy that he won despite not having what he felt was a flashy move. Because right. I, I, part of me was like, oh, they're making all these treads for why Carolyn's going to beat them. Like, I hope I don't regret, like, keeping Carolyn around. That's I hope that doesn't bite me in the ass. Um, I need to find an idol. Doesn't find an idol. I need to go into fire and win fire making. I need something flashy on my resume to say that I outplayed people. He already outplayed people. Like, that's the part mm-hmm. I need everyone here to learn is... He did outplay without having to use that stuff because he was just that damn good in this format. Are you guys stoked on a Jam Jam win? Because I am. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I, I think it, I think overall, while he will have his detractors just because there are people that won't like... Because of who he is, he is extremely over the top. That's just his personality. It will be distasteful for some, but enjoyable for others and yeah. that isn't a bad thing. stupid idiots that's it, the it others. isn't a bad that's thing because right. guess what if you're universally loved that's boring yeah that's, that's boring true. survivor that's boring for survivor to have someone who's like oh 
white meat baby face that has no one that hates them. It's like you need right. to have these characters that cause emotion. And this season, yeah. ha- we had people that gave us emotion, whether you loved them or hated them, and you're like Danny leaving all of us. Like oh, I'm, I'm glad he's gone now. He did his purpose. I'm good. You have Carolyn, like, right. if anything happens to this woman, we are rioting in the streets. <laughs> like, Well, I, I mean, I, I, I look at it as a, from someone who does a podcast each and every week with you guys. It's like being able to talk about these players and be annoyed by somebody or, or really love somebody. And uh, I think that out of the new season of uh, – or new era of Survivor, that this season was the best out of – since Winners yeah. at War. Agree. Um, I still put 42 at the top for me. Uh, personally, I think it was just the most well balanced. Who edit. won that one, Marianne? Marianne. Okay. Um, yeah. but I felt it was the most well balanced edit. I feel like it told stories in appropriate fashion. It like you hit all the treads of like the power players and when they would be up in power, and then as they're losing power, you got the next players edit rising, and yeah. you kept having those moments. 44 is right up there, though. Like, great, great winner, because as much as a season can be good, a bad winner can tank it. Well, I um, love Jesse Lopez last year. He was he was my highlight of if, last if Jesse, season. If Jesse won 43, 43 is my favorite season, to yeah. be honest. Right. If Car- if Carla got the chance to win, if Cassie won, I, right. I would have left it a lot more positively received based off the story that they showed us. But 44 as a whole, very pleasant season great dynamic characters uh that they were willing to show us and some good characters that they did not allow us to show see. us no. um, but so I, think, I, wanna, I think it's a win it's a win i, for I, sure. I agree i agree so i want to ask you guys i did not see the uh season 45 near did i kind of <laughs> preview but i will say there is a person who is heavily survive uh heavily uh involved in the survivor like fandom kind of thing. I, I've been seeing a lot of people on my Facebook who say like this guy, Ryan Weiss on Facebook says, so unbelievably excited about this one. One of my very best friends in the entire world is going to be on survivor. And it's the guy, it's this guy right here. Uh, he's got, Oh, um, is he, he's like kind of like a big fan, big fan. Big if, fan it's who, person. If, if it's who I'm thinking of, it, he's big, big fan. Uh, does a lot, did a lot of like the online Survivor games, just like Carolyn did, correct? Um, I think he, yeah, just like Carolyn. I believe he even made like a random like RHAP appearance for like Big Brother potentially. Okay. Um. So. He, so yeah, he, everyone in the Survivor every, fandom every, is excited yeah, twi- about Twitter, him. Yeah, Twitter. If it's who I'm thinking of, like the my Twitter circles as well. Like when he was revealed, everyone was like, "Oh my god!" Like he is someone who was made for the show. We're so excited to see him. So hopefully he delivers. And so, do you think we're looking on now? Sur- Sur- Survivor 44 has come to an end, which is totally crazy to me because it's like you blink and the season is over. With uh, we have 90 minutes coming up this. Uh, fall in september uh 90 minute episodes we've talked about this on our patreon podcast what are your guys initial thoughts on that leading into a strong season 44 ending going into season 45 what first of all is that guy uh brandon donlin it's i think it's the brand i think it's brandon yeah uh content producer from philly that's yeah. What the, yep. Yeah. That's the, the rumor. Um, I, I mean, I love 90 minute episodes. I know a lot of people, there's going to be a lot of people that don't, but I love that on the caveat that we actually get stories for people like Lauren. And it's not so we get to watch them do stupid puzzles that we all know how to do mm-hmm. for 15 minutes as opposed to three minutes or whatever it is. Right. So. Um, yeah, that's, that's like the big thing. Like, I know one thing Jeff said is he wanted, um, he wanted to bring potentially like reward challenges back. I don't, I don't know how much space you have in a 26 day format for that. And to, to our knowledge currently it's 45 at the very least will still be a 26 day game. 
Yeah. Um, so my hope is that extra 20 minutes of um of footage that is in commercials and ads is given to us to get more insight into what's going on in the game and not about the journey, the right. the take a vote, steal a oh, vote, yeah. but you lose yeah. a vote oh, advantage. God. Like like uh, the the take two birds but give one vote. Like it's like I'm gonna like you can really make up every day a new bird cage. The the spaghetti <laughs> advantage. Uh, you, you'll have oh, spaghetti, God. but you must have chocolate right. cake with it. Listen, I'm gonna tell you this. Within the next five seasons, if there's ever uh the spaghetti advantage, I will get a the spaghetti advantage tattooed on me somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> we heard it I, here now. I, there, I'll I'll mark down on that. There you go. I love it. And uh this has been so fun all year. Uh Wayne, I have not been able to podcast with you just uh besides like the Q and A's and stuff on our yeah, Patreon yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. But uh it's been so fun each and every week talking about Survivor, the show we all love. And at Hell the yeah. end of the day, even when I dog on 41, 42, and 43, I still love Survivor. Even a bad Survivor is better than no Survivor. I'm very happy that we are still seeing this ultimate experience, uh, this ultimate game in 2023 it's 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 amazing and, and before we go what do we have coming up what uh because we're kind of challenges done all the challenges are done survivors done i'm sure we're on a little bit of a break for the we'll first time in a long time well there's gonna be yeah. big brother coming up in august yeah. uh and, and then the challenge usa in august yeah. and yeah. survivor and 45 in september and also <laughs> yeah. a a yet to be revealed show potentially that will probably all have also to do air as well. in September potentially oh, also yeah. potentially in September. I, I, so. I, I think Johnny Fairplay is going to be uh, more uh, known potentially. I mean, we know there's a writer strike right now, correct? And yeah, it's right. like for the foreseeable future. So I feel like this is good for reality TV um, because we don't know how long it's going to last. And so, uh, all I'd say, we're, we're we might be like a little bit, you know, we're not you're not gonna hear us so much over the next couple of weeks, but listen to our Patreon. We'll find, we'll, we'll find something to talk about. We'll find something to talk about. There will, we'll, oh, jury uh, duty. I am gonna start, I'm gonna start a new podcast about uh, the Matlock starring Kathy Bates. So, uh, we're gonna <laughs> that was advertised during Survivor. Uh, it's a uh, Young Matlock, but it's Kathy Bates. So, uh, well, well, tune in because I mean, I'm really hoping that we get to talk to some of the the cast from uh, Survivor yeah. 44. Honestly, like I really would love to talk to Jam Jam and Carolyn. So, like, stay tuned. Look at what we're doing, and uh, if you want to become a patron, go to realitypatron.com. Uh, the Q and A is uh, there's always some really cool stuff happening. Johnny Fairplay. Yeah, let fun. me let me just tell you. Johnny Fairplay is no holds barred. He tells you stuff he should definitely not tell you, and it's only available on our Patreon coverage at realitypatreon.com. If you're ever like, what would it be like to listen to these guys or these folks podcast, like just podcast, which, you know, whatever, just podcast, not have to recap a show and take notes and all that stuff. That's that's what this is. That's We just kind of – Stick around and have fun. Shoot the shit. Like, yeah, yeah just, it's just real talk and, and into our lives of what's going yeah. on. And it's my most favorite one because, yes, yeah. there's no note taking. There's no, you know, and I will say I, I want to give uh, uh, Alex Trius uh, uh, props because uh, my brain does not work in a in a capacity that <laughs> knows what's what's going on. And I always count on Alex Trius to uh, really kind of uh, reel in the detail-oriented stuff of of these podcasts. So uh, Alex is is very very um, been great. Dude, you podcast. Been very great podcasting with you uh, all season. It's it's uh it's really great. It's it's, it's really always great. a pleasure. And ever since you and Johnny brought me in for season forty one and onward. It's been a blessing for me to be a part of this and get to have my survivor analysis and uh, really come out 
in my own way as a character on this uh on this platform it's truly yeah. been uh one one of a kind experience yeah and for the people listening live right now and commenting in the comment section this is why we do this like we all love the show but we're spending our time uh late at night here it's, it's 11 40 p.m on a on a third or a, sorry a wednesday night we're talking about survivor not for like it's not raining dollar bills trust me of what we're doing this is a passion project of something that we love this is a great community of of friends that i have met yes and, and i tell people every day they're like oh you played survivor i'm like yeah i played survivor 10 years ago but let me tell you this I have done so much cool shit and continue 10 years later to do really cool stuff because of this crazy reality show that we all love. So for everyone, all of our listeners, uh, all of our patrons, everyone involved in the survivor community, we cannot wait for September when season 45 starts and follow us all on social media. Yeah, uh, we're, we're excited and jam jam. If you're listening, congrats. Can, yeah, we love you, dude. I cannot wait to meet you. I know Sandra Diaz Twine, who came to my house a couple months back. She I know met, I was there. Yeah, she had met Jam Jam somewhere on a vacation somewhere, and she said Jam Jam is awesome. I know Jam Jam, you are awesome. Watch party in Puerto Rico next year. Yes. So uh, uh, let's we, go. I wonder who the secret guest will be. <laughs> no, it'll be Heidi. And the best part, the best part about it is Carolyn sniffing Jam Jam's beard. I don't uh, think in the history of my beard, ain't. I've had a beard forever. My <laughs> wife is never sniffing my beard. And if she did, she'd be like, what the hell is that smell, dude? So uh, props to everyone. We love you. The survivor yeah. community is the ultimate, the best. And uh, so if season 44 people, uh, welcome to the family. And season 45 uh, castaways, uh, we can't wait to fucking roast you guys and girls. I was going to say, just Moving wait for forward. Matt's cast assessment. Wait for the cast assessment, because I, I assure you, I will screw up every prediction and every player there. But uh, cheers, everybody. It's a wrap. We love you all. Uh, and good night.